On September 2, 1945, a Japanese delegation headed by Mamoru Shigemitsu, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, boarded the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. At 9.04 a.m., along with Yoshijiro Umetsu, who represented the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters, Mamoru Shigemetsu signed the Instrument of Surrender. This marked the end of the Second World War. More than two billion people across the world had been plunged into the war, which had resulted in 90 million casualties and over five trillion dollars in economic losses. It all started on September 18, 1931, when the Japanese army bombed a section of the South Manchuria Railway near Liu Tiaohu in Shenyang and blamed it on the Chinese army. Using this as a pretext, they then bombarded the Northeastern Army at Beidaing. It marked the start of the largest war in human history. During this 14-year struggle, many people fought and laid down their lives for the dignity of the Chinese nation. They were the bright stars that shone all too briefly in the night sky of history. At the northern foot of the North Hill in Tsinghua University stands a three-meter-high stone tablet. Sixty-five names are engraved on the base beneath it. They are the names of the students of the university who gave their lives for the nation. One of these names is Zhang Chou. This name is also engraved on the monument to revolutionary martyrs in Peking University. Who was he? Why does his name appear on monuments in two universities? This young man is Zhang Chia Zhou. At the age of 16, he entered the number one middle school of Chi Chi Ha'ar, 
Heilongjiang province as a top student. He was then enrolled into an elite industrial college in Chi Chi Ha Ar at the age of 19. Zhang Jianzhou in the school of studying has two qualities. The first quality is he is a scholar. The second quality is he is particularly good at Jinbu. From the very beginning of the school, you can see that the first ranking of the Heilong Jiangsheng is the first ranking of the Chi Chi Ha Ar. In 1928, Chang Jiazhou entered the Department of Physics at Peking University and ranked second in his department. But just one year later, soon after he joined the Communist Party of China, he made a baffling decision. He applied for the Department of Political Science of Tsinghua University. What did the department give him? 现在想把工作重点转到清华，你能不能从北大考到清华去？那张夏周没问题，当就考进清华。是那一年，清华整个考学的学生之中排名第二，考进了清华政治系。你看他原来是个理科生，说考就考到清华，说考清华就考到清华的文科去了。The History Museum at Tsinghua University still keeps the School Journal of National Tsinghua University, published on September 15, 1930. It contains the list of students admitted that year and shows that the Department of Political Science took in 195 students. Zhang Jiazhou was at the top of the list. Zhang Jiazhou was the definition of a straight-A student. But not long after the September 18th incident, he gave up his studies and went straight to occupied Northeast China, along with five other students who were also party members. Zhang Jiazhou returned to the North, with five people and guns. Five people, two guns. But these five people are still in the same place today. 一个是他在清华大学的同学，经济系的于天放，还有像中法大学法学院的夏尚志，有北平师范大学的张文藻，还有东京工业学院的毕业生郑炳文，还有中国大学的张清林。那么这几个人应该说在当时啊，特别能让我们体会到一句话，就是中华民族最优秀的子孙。那么他们都投入到抗日的战场上去了。What was the situation in Northeast China back then? On September 18, 1931, the Japanese army occupied Shenyang in about five hours. They then occupied all 1.2 million square kilometers of land in Northeast China in four months and 18 days. 34 million people lived under the bayonets of the Japanese army. September 18th became a day of national humiliation the Chinese people will never forget. Zhang Jiazhou's hometown was in Baiyan County in Heilongjiang province. His family had 300 hectares of farmland. His family in Baiyan is属于豪门啊，是当地开油房的。那么他怎么能够把这些人员召集起来呢？他就搞了一个假结婚的仪式。张亚洲带领从北京回来的五个大学生。就是在这个他张家的老宅子里，秘密组建八眼抗日游击队。啊，回来了，说是回来结婚，拉了一个皮箱，一个铝条包，台巴子送进来了。其实是回来了
On May 16, 1932, an anti-Japanese team, made up of more than 300 members, was organized at the fake wedding ceremony arranged by Zhang Chia-Zhou. It was the first anti-Japanese armed force established by the Communist Party of China in the Northeast. Zhang Chia-Zhou decided to name it Pingyan.为什么平阳呢其实就是平东阳的意思就是要把日本鬼子赶出去可是老百姓啊并不管他们叫平阳很多人一看呢都是谦谦学子的确这个部队里面有三十多名大学生呢于是这支部队就被老百姓称之为大
That turning point was marked by this sculpture in Yunyang town, Shanxi province. Thanks to the efforts of the Communist Party of China, cooperation with the Kuomintang became a reality. On August 25, 1937, the Communist Party of China made the decision to combine the 1st, 2nd, 4th Front Armies of the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army and the Red Army of North Shanxi into the 8th Root Army of the National Revolutionary Army. Five days later, the 8th Root Army and the 115th Division held a meeting to reorganize and swear an oath to fight the Japanese in Yunyang. It was here that they took the first step in working together to fight Japanese aggression. In the army was a new recruit named Liu Zhongxin from Ji'an, Jiangxi province. He had said farewell to his mother three years previously. After a long and difficult journey, he finally reached Ye'an. As he prepared to take to the battlefield, his thoughts turned to his mother. Zi 这些信呢是我大伯寄给我爸爸三七年以后寄回来有好几十封信This letter is five pages long, and a few characters are written incorrectly. But Liu Zhongxin's love for his family cannot be mistaken. When 哭得一个眼睛已经哭哭坏了，他就是半瞎的样子。In September 1937, while the Japanese army continued its advance in China. Some good news came out of Shanxi. In Pingxinguan, the main force of the 115th Division of the 8th Root Army had annihilated more than 1,000 Japanese soldiers. It was the first major victory since the War of Resistance began. Liu Zhongxin was a member of the division. During the six-hour battle, it suffered more than 600 casualties, many of whom were experienced soldiers who'd gone through the long march. When I was in the house, I 
，一起出来了三四十个朋友，现在也不知道何处工作去了。因为和他一起参加红军的同一批的人是有三四十个人，但是因为连年的转战，这三四十个人到哪里去了？他一点音信都不知道。在两千四百多人当中，建国以后跟我们家乡有音信的二三十个人，不到十分之一。那么可见，就是我们家乡的亲人为了革命、为了抗日救国而献出了自己的生命。After years of waiting, Liu Zhongxin, who was in Shanxi, finally received a letter from his family. On the 7th of April, I received a letter from my family. I was very happy to receive this letter. 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 I was very happy to receive 不能有挂号信，所以有钱也不能寄回来。请你们再等一个时期，将来交通便利的时候，儿急速把钱和眼药就寄回来了。Liu Zhongxin never went back to his hometown again. He didn't even leave a picture. What did he look like? Where did he end up? All that Liu Zhongxin left his family were a few letters and endless waiting. This ancient French-style building at the end of the Zhejiang Road in Wuhan is the century-old Da Jinmen Railway Station. On September 17, 1937, Hao Mengling, commander of the Ninth Army of the National Revolutionary Army, boarded a train here and headed north. This 39-year-old soldier had been waiting for this moment for six years. In February 1931, Chiang Kai-shek mobilized 200,000 troops and launched the second encirclement against the central Soviet area. Hao Meng Ling, the then commander of the 54th Division, was ordered to take part. That same year, he applied for resignation, but his request was refused. 他有个反复都不愿意打，他就说：“我两次请求解家归田嘛，都没有批准。”后来就派到贵阳去修公路。我们这数年中，戎马匆匆，疲于奔命。但是这样的战争究竟有多大价值，实成疑问。战争的结果，只是消耗了国家的生命财产。如将这消耗。用来对付我们共同的敌人倭寇，我想一定能给予他不小的打击。On July 29, 1937, Bei Ping fell. Hao Meng Ling made a request to Chiang Kai-shek to go north to fight the Japanese army. This time, his application was approved. He left the time. 头一天晚上就写了一封信，留给他们。后来我的大姑，她就把它拿去信，把那封信拿来拆开看，写的就像一个遗嘱。他就问了父亲：“临走的时候你怎么写一个这个？”当时这个父亲很生气，就把那封信给撕了。后来我的大姑呢，她就把它捡起来，又把它拼上去。此次北上抗日，无。已抱定牺牲，万一阵亡
，你等要听母亲的调教，孝顺如祖母。关于你等上学，我个人是没有钱。将来国家战胜，你等可进彝族学校。父，刘玉，一九三七年九月十五日。Two days later, Hao Mengling said goodbye to his family. He didn't let his family go. My grandfather, he was 15 years old. He alone went to follow his father. He saw his father's body in front of the police. He was sent to the army. He didn't look at his face. He didn't look at his face. Many years later, he told us that if he will remember that his body in front of the police, that face will be there. Hao Hui Ying didn't realize that was the last time she would see her father. Xingko in Shanxi province lies between Wutai Mountain and Yunzhong Mountain. It was the last line of defense from northern Shanxi to Taiyuan. When Hao Mengling was on the train, the Japanese division, which suffered huge losses in the Battle of Pingxingguan, was gathering near Daishen County and preparing to take Xingko and Taiyuan. On October 4th, Hao Mengling reached Xingko, where he was appointed chief commander of the Central Corps. His task was to resist the Japanese army at the main position in Nan Kwai Hua. Dozens of cave dwellings are still preserved north of Xingko. Cave dwelling number nine was Hao Meng Ling's command headquarters. On the night of October 10th, he sat in here and wrote in his diary. On October 13th, the Japanese division mobilized 5,000 troops. Under the cover of warplanes, tanks, and heavy artillery, they launched a fierce attack on the main position in Nan Kwai Hua, which was being guarded by Hao Meng Ling. 这个时候呀、啊，就是经历到七六十三次上来下去，最后是怎么战的？二零四搞的，本地人叫毛泽良，长得和毛胖的形状一样。这这这就是咱们那个六人德老，这个六人德老上的碑。哎 ，This broken tablet lies on the site of Highland 204. It is filled with bullet marks, showing just how fierce that battle was from 80 years ago. This war is a nation's survival. Only death can be saved. If you go back to the Red Sea, there is no guard. There is no guard. 此为我死国活，我活国死。On October 15th, the Japanese army once again broke through Nan Kwai Hua. The Chinese army fought at close quarters with the enemy twice, but their efforts were in vain. That day, the higher authorities sent another seven brigades to reinforce Hao Mengling's troops. That night, he made another entry in his diary. That was Hao Meng Ling's last diary entry.
The following dawn, he launched a general offensive in an effort to take back the highland in Nan Kwai Hua. His army conquered several hills. Li Wen Chao, chief of the staff section of the 9th Army, recalled, The enemy had noticed our movements. They fired volleys of bullets and shells at us. I asked him to take some rest. He said, Am I here to rest? I whispered, answer the phone in the cave dwelling. He said, we are not afraid of shells. At that moment, the enemy launched a barrage of gunfire at us. We all threw ourselves to the ground. After a while, he stood up and went straight ahead. He was shot twice and fell to the ground. The Battle of Xing Ko lasted 21 days. The armies of the Kuomintang and the CPC worked together to fight the Japanese army. Soldiers and officers fought bravely and fearlessly, showing the patriotism of the Chinese people. James Bertram, a correspondent from the British newspaper Daily Herald, wrote that the battle was a bitter lesson for the Japanese army and a valuable morale boost for the Chinese people. On October 24, 1937, Hao Huiying came to Da Chimun Railway Station again. One month earlier, she had secretly seen off her father here. On this day, she was waiting for her father's coffin and a letter he had written to her mother. Bowding 好好孝顺吴老母No one listening to those powerful words today could fail to be moved by his patriotism and fearlessness. As Hao Mengling's coffin was sent back to Wuhan, the war of resistance was spreading across the whole country. Soldiers were coming from around the nation to join the front line. The famous writer Ba Jin wrote, This time, all the Chinese people are uniting as a whole. We devote all we have so that this whole can survive. Only when the whole exists will we as individuals exist. 
Countless people have died for our country, and countless people have put aside personal grudges and worked together to save our nation. They came from the south and from the north, from the east and from the west, to form a people's army. With a new faith in their hearts, men and women left their homes and farms to fight for something bigger now than each man's home, and each man's farm, and each man's life. They were fighting for new China. In Guangxi, Li Zongren from the Guangxi clique expanded the ground forces into three army groups and the air force into four squadrons. The first and second squadrons would go to the front line first. One of those to sign up was He Xin, an air force lieutenant. He Xin was born in Guilin, Guangxi. After the September 18th incident, he gave up his studies and entered the radio department of the military school of Liu Zhou. At that time, I was only 17 years old. The officer was called Zhou Jingzi. Then, this Zhou Jingzi told me, he said, your father is a high-tech machine. I said, how is it a high-tech machine? He said, the usual code is to accept it. You have to have a phone call, one by one, one by one, one by one. 在对照密码本来翻译成字，但是核心不用，他就是听了，他直接可以翻译成文。In 1932, He Xin completed his studies at the military school, but instead of choosing to work in a radio station where he could earn a monthly salary of 300 silver dollars, he applied to the newly established Guangxi Aviation School. 所有的亲友都不赞成，为什么呢？因为当时学航空啊，尤其是飞行员，认为是非常非常危险的事情。飞行员有一个绰号叫“玻璃公仔”，“玻璃公仔”是桂林话，意思就是玻璃人。飞行员一摔下来，就像玻璃人一样就碎了。In October 1937, as the War of Resistance was in full swing in China, Hua Xin and other men from Guangxi boarded their warplanes and bid farewell to their hometown. Dear雲妹 Soon after the Spring Festival in 1938, Hu Xin, Vice Captain of the 8th Squadron of the 3rd Air Group, led his squadron to fight in the Battle of Shuzhou. They would intercept enemy planes in the sky over Tangxian County, Lincheng, Cao Zhuang, and Tai Er Zhuang, and work with ground forces to guard the forward position. Yunmei, people always want to live. If your life is big, you will die early, even if you don't die. Then the price you get is naturally the same. This can be said to be the same. 
艰苦后甜，这才惬意哩。假如你的人儿命短，那么，好妹妹，你不要过于伤心，你要把求儿带大，教大。直到他知道为父报仇，为国雪耻失职。同时，好好的送了母亲上天。那时，你再寄于志，最少拼掉一个敌人。我们再在泉下过那快乐的、不知人间的生活吧。On March 25th, He Xin led 14 warplanes in a battle against 17 Japanese warplanes in the skies over Linqing in Shandong province. They brought down six of the enemy aircraft. When my father was taking the plane to the plane, the Japanese plane was already taken to the plane. They were taken to the plane. They were taken to the plane. 二十四架驱逐机埋伏在我父亲他们返航的这个途中，藏在云端。待我父亲他们飞到一个叫马木吉上空的时候，这二十四架驱逐机的从高空冲下来拦截他们。Against these Japanese armadas. At that moment, 36 warplanes from both sides battled in the skies over Shangzhou, Henan province. The fight was fierce, and the roar of guns thundered through the sky. This time, my father's plane, 12 planes, have already passed the enemy's fighting. But the fight is very small. 机油很少吧。Though outnumbered, He Xin was not scared. He headed his squadron toward the Japanese warplanes once again, and they fought bravely. During the skirmish, he was shot in the chest three times. In his dying moments, he sped towards his enemy at full speed. On April 3rd, 1938, the Chinese army launched a counterattack on all fronts in Tai Ar Zhuang. That day, He Xin's body was sent back to his hometown of Guilin. A couplet written by his mother, Jin Yongfang, was prominently displayed at the public memorial ceremony. It read, We knew it was a dangerous job. We're glad that you realized your wish. Patriotic and filial, you never let me down. You died at a young age. Unfortunately, the enemy still runs wild. You died for our people and our country. It's a pity that we couldn't keep you alive longer. Just as the body was about to enter the ground, Jin Yong Fang unfastened his blood-stained uniform and was astonished to find a sachet on his badly mutilated chest. The characters on it were still visible. They said, repay the country with loyalty. When the country was in danger, 
countless Chinese people stood up to protect it. They left their parents, wives, and peaceful lives to throw themselves into the war of resistance. Yimei 不要悲伤挂念到信阳后寄出三次信They came from Yunnan, Sichuan, Hubei, Shanxi, and all corners of China. In the prime of their lives, they stepped forward to defend our country and died heroic deaths on the battlefield. In her book, American journalist Anna Louise Strong talked about how extraordinary Chinese soldiers were. It made her realize that even if the enemy subjected them to 100 bombardments and 10,000 disasters, it would be impossible to conquer a strong nation like this.